Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at osmosis and diffusion and how these substances move across membranes. Now what we need to do is we need to just quickly go over what membranes are, how they work, because ultimately their structure will influence how things move through them. Now cell membranes are differentially permeable, so essentially it means they can tell the difference between the substances that are trying to move through it. Now our cell membrane here has a lipid bilayer, and this lipid bilayer is made out of hydrophobic and hydrophilic components. In other words, components that attract water and also repel it. Now, water is a unique substance in that it has almost like a, a privilege in easily moving into the cell. And basically what happens is that if water moves from the outside of the cell, it's attracted in towards the hydrophilic side of our biolipid layer, it then gets repelled through the hydrophobic tails, and then it gets pushed through and passed inside the cell. Often water moves through diffusion, but I'll explain that later on in the video. You'll also notice in this membrane there is something called a channel protein. Now, there are many different kinds of channel proteins, but essentially they are proteins that are embedded in the bilipid layer, and they allow only certain substances to move through this space. You have to be the right size and the right shape, and this is where that whole selectively permeable or differentially permeable aspect of a membrane comes in. What's also important to note is that water is small enough uh, to move through our cell membrane, but not all other substances are small enough, and that's often why we need channel proteins to assist them through, or sometimes we even need to add energy to the process in order to force them across the membrane as well. Let's look at the first mechanism that we use to describe how substances move, and that is through diffusion. And this is when a substance will move from a high concentration to a low concentration along a concentration gradient. Often what we have is some kind of solute that you can see here in the diagram. And this solute is something that has been dissolved. In this instance, we are just dissolving perhaps like a salt in water, but this could also be applied to, for example, how gases move through a space. And essentially, they will always move from a high concentration to a low. And the reason for that is that the particles start off being really close to one another, and they don't want to be close to one another. They want to evenly distribute themselves out. And so the aim is to reach an equilibrium. Now, diffusion is a passive process. In other words, this process will occur on its own. It requires no other external stimulation, which also means it requires no energy. And often we use diffusion to describe the movement of gases or solutes. You probably have heard about diffusion when we speak about how carbon dioxide and oxygen exchange in the alveoli, and that's through diffusion as well as how solutes may dissolve and then distribute when um, stirring in something like salt into water. I felt it also important to point out something called facilitated diffusion. And essentially what this little picture is showing is that there is a high concentration of substances on the outside of the cell and a concentration, a low concentration on the inside of the cell. The problem is, is that normally these substances are too big to move through the membrane on their own. And so they can't fit through these small little spaces in between the lipid bilayer. So what they need is some kind of channel protein that assists them through. But it's important to know that this is still passive and it's more selective in what can and cannot move through these specific channel proteins. Now let's take a look at osmosis, and osmosis specifically is the movement of water molecules through a selective membrane, and it's affected by the solute concentration. Now, in tests, it's important to note that osmosis is a type of diffusion, and water is the only one that gets its own name, and that's because water has a lot of membrane privileges in the way it moves and where it can go and where it can't go. And so if you're asked, you need to give the word osmosis. You cannot simply say the diffusion of water. Now, osmosis is a passive process, which means it also follows a concentration gradient. However, what's really important is that it follows the concentration gradient of the solutes. In other words, water 
wants to be around the solutes. It's attracted to the solutes, whether it be a salt, um, some kind of other ion. Water will move towards that because it wants to dilute it. So let's talk about what we can see in the diagram in front of us. Now, there's a lot of terminology associated with osmosis. The first thing we need to talk about is water potential. And if we look at our first diagram, we have a beaker of water and we have inserted a membrane that sits now down the middle. And that's what this dotted line is. It's a selectively permeable membrane. Now, on the one side of our liquid solution, we have a high water potential, which is represented by these pink smaller dots. On the other side of the membrane, there is a lower water potential. And the reason for that is that the purple dots represent the solutes, whereas the smaller pinker dots represent water. Now, what's really critical here is this. The solutes are too big to move through the membrane, the dotted line. And so water does all the moving. It moves via osmosis. And this is really critical for explaining osmosis. And when we look at osmosis and the movement of water, we have to talk about a few concepts. The first one is something called hypotonic. Hypotonic means that it is a solution that has a low solute concentration and a high water sol uh, water concentration. Another word that's associated with this solute and water is hypertonic. Hypertonic refers to the opposite. It refers to a high solute concentration and a low water concentration. Now, hypo and hypertonic refers to the actual solution, as in what you can find in it. Now, eventually, what we're trying to do is we are trying to get to a place of equal uh, water to salt ratio. And we refer to that as a isotonic solution, which is when our equal amounts of solute and water are present in the solution. That's what we're trying to aim for. So if we look at our diagram alongside, I'm going to place the labels on the locations of these solutions so that we can see them more clearly. So if we start off with the original diagram, we have a hypotonic solution on this side of the membrane, as you can see, which means it has a low solute, high water, which is those water molecules are all of the um, tiny little pink dots. And then on the other side, we have a hypertonic solution, which means that we have a solution with a lot more solutes. Now, if we take a look at what has happened, if we were to just leave this um, liquid inside these beakers, what would happen? So essentially what's going to happen is our water molecules are attracted to our solutes. Remember, the solutes are these um, big purple molecules we can see here. And basically what we're aiming for is a solution that is isotonic. And so what's going to happen is these pink um, water molecules are going to move from a high concentration to a low concentration, and they are following the concentration gradient of the salt. In other words, they are going to move from an area where there isn't very much salt, which is in this first picture here, there isn't very much salt here, and they're going to move towards a place where there is a lot of salt. And that's because water is attracted to salt. It's going to go into that place. Wherever the solute is, is where water wants to be. Now, eventually, what we want to achieve is a level of isotonic. In other words, the water molecules are equal on each side of the membrane, which is what has happened here in the second part of our diagram. The final part associated with diffusion and osmosis is active transport. Now, active transport is really unique for the following reasons. Firstly, it goes against the concentration gradient. In other words, it's going to move from a low concentration to a high concentration. And we can see that here in the diagram alongside. You will notice that if this is the outside of the cell, you will see here that we only have a few molecules that we want to move across the membrane. So this is the low side 
Whereas on the other side, there is a high concentration of these molecules. And that's what we mean by going against the concentration gradient. We're moving from a low to a high. The second thing that makes active transport different is that it requires energy. Often this energy is in the form of ATP molecules, as we can see in the diagram alongside. And ATP is required because you have to force molecules against their concentration gradient, which is difficult. It's sort of like the more energy you would need to push a ball up a hill, as opposed to the energy you would need to let it roll down. If you let a ball roll down a hill, it easily rolls down because of gravity assisting you and there's no extra energy required. However, if you have to push that ball up the hill, then you have to add more energy to it to get it up the hill. Now, this is an active movement, which means that there's going to be actually some moving parts and some moving mechanisms that actually work. In other words, the particles don't just make their way through either the um, membrane itself, through the bilipid layer. And the channel protein in question is not hollow on the inside. Like previously, we had these channel proteins that if I cut one in half, you could just simply squeeze right through it and flow right through. In this instance, we need a special kind of channel protein just like we can see alongside here in the picture in yellow. And that special kind of channel protein that we see actually works like a swing door. In other words, it only allows you to travel in one direction. And so as something comes in, it will lock into its space and then it will be delivered on the other side. And that locking in mechanism is only able to happen with the ATP. And so it's that ATP that is sort of like that swinging door. It, it pushes the door open in the opposite direction. It sort of forces the door in the opposite direction so that we can get extra nutrients in. Why do we have active transport? Because often the body and other systems require extra amounts of energy or extra amounts of nutrients. And so what we have to do is we must go against the concentration gradient to ensure that we have as many nutrients as possible so that that we don't lose anything. So to wrap up this lesson, let's have a look at some terminology recap. So first of all, we need to know what the cell membrane is and what it does. And it's that selectively permeable membrane or differentially permeable membrane that sits around a cell. And that is made out of a lipid bilayer. And that lipid bilayer is only going to allow certain things to move through it, for example, water. It also has channel proteins embedded in it to assist with diffusion. Now, diffusion is substances that move from a high concentration to a low concentration, and it's passive. And we call this a concentration gradient. Now, osmosis is the movement of water from a high concentration to a low, and it's also passive. It requires no energy. And when we refer to osmosis, often we are talking about the movement of water in relation to the solute concentration. And so a hypertonic solution is a solution with high salt, low water. Hypotonic, on the other hand, is low solute, high water. And isotonic is equal. That means water and solute levels are equal on both sides of the membrane. We also spoke about water potential, which refers to how much water has been used in that particular solution. In other words, if you have a high water potential, then you will have a low solute concentration. And so they work in opposite of one another. And finally, we looked at active transport. This is when we use energy in order to push substances like solutes, gases, nutrients against the concentration gradient. And we do that with energy, with ATP. And this may require the use of a channel protein. Thank you again, once again, everybody. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. See you again. Bye.